interestingly, it wasn't because I think Heather uh, Riddard in particular pointed that the age, ageing population uh, has been on the government's agenda for a long time. So I think that was about 24% of our hmm. poll of about 500 people, right, which hmm. is a, it's a good poll. But the one that topped it was the, it was the emergence of Asia. And, um, and we've seen the government actually, a couple of free trade agreements in the last 12 months, but are they doing enough? These mega trends aren't necessarily bad. No, uh, they, there's implications there that there can are be wonderful. Yeah, that's right. There mm. are reality, but great opportunities too. That's right, and I think the one that uh, you got onto, in fact, I was about to interject in the room, was about urbanisation, which actually seems a bit of a small issue, right? Mm. Mm. But if you're in New Zealand, uh, this towns, regional towns, closing down. Yes, and. Uh, it's all okay until it's not okay and and I think there might be a role and I think Heather again mentioned that Australian super right, can't find infrastructure opportunities to invest in and government aren't doing enough and if they're not doing enough they're probably not doing it to move urban or activity outside of the major centres so although we didn't get a huge response in the poll that could be a bigger issue than might be first appears. There was elements of all these trends where they actually crossed over. So, for example, thinking about the ageing population and also the trend of um, very rapidly improving technology, a clear area of connect there would be for those citizens coming into that phase of their lives where they want to and desire to remain at home and perhaps the advancing technology will allow that to happen to a degree, more online engagement with physicians, easier ways to assess your own health at home than necessarily having to leave the family home uh, and, and all that goes with that and then move into a different phase. So it is interesting how the trends actually cross over. You know, we've invested a lot in the NBN and this is a bit of a hobby horse of mine, but. One of the things as a country, both Australia and New Zealand suffer from, is the tyranny of distance mm. and technology, tyranny of distance from the rest of the world. And uh, technology, the NBN, at billions we've invested in that, if that doesn't bring us closer to the rest of the world, I don't know what will. Now, if your technology can do that and do it effectively, then perhaps the challenge is then to reposition the quality of life that one may have outside of the urban areas. Because mm. when you look at this dialogue, and one of the things I really enjoyed about the panel discussion yesterday, you know, Rick Symes and Heather Riddout uh, and Peter Van Onselen was the way that we have to have this debate as a country, uh, that what are the things that do impact us, our way of living, the success of the business, our future prosperity. Um, and without having that debate, and unfortunately, and we'll probably talk about this later, the short-termism of the political cycle is really damaging. The whole debate around managing risk on the upside and the downside is a very interesting one. You know, our polling showed that probably most of our 500 people think Australia doesn't manage risk well, um, but a large proportion didn't know, which really means to me they haven't thought about it. Or, that's right, they haven't thought about it or not really able to, from their context, uh, comprehend exactly what does it look like and feel like. When you're talking about risk and how it's managed, what does that actually mean? Hmm. I think naturally in a lot of this conversation, Rob, in the polls and that all comes down to risk aversion mm -hmm. and more than risk management and that was very clear in the paper and I felt it in the dialogue. But importantly, where was the elements around encouraging innovation and seeing that Australia can take much more calculated risks and ones that have a lot of upside and, and benefit. Uh, let's just think about it. Uh, the floating did. Australian dollar. Yes. Deregulation of the banking system. Uh, really, the whole superannuation retirement you know, system that's been established by the Keating government many years ago is a legacy that I think will stand. That was a risk. Correct. That was a political risk and also a financial risk was seen as a very wise move, which in 30, 50 years' time will see the benefit. 
So there were some real calculated risks. What do you think of the risks that as a government and as a nation we're not really addressing? For me, it's mm. the element that uh, I spoke, I, I think, quite passionately yesterday mm. that the country is being restrained from developing areas and ideas and innovation. It feels where, to a degree, a level of complacency because of where we've been able to go in our economic success, complacency to a degree that we've um, moved well through the financial crisis, but where is the impetus to innovate and, and to really experiment much more than perhaps where we've been? And so I feel the, the greatest risk is the risk not to do things. Not to do things, right. Now, Rob, we've already touched on in some of the conversation mm -hmm. around this element or theme of short-termism. We tried to bring that out further with one of our questions, both on the poll and to uh, our audience yesterday, around the um, political cycle. Uh, and we were asking the question fundamentally of, does the current cycle at a federal level inhibit or add to our international competitiveness? It was a bit divided, but I think the sense was we're not in the right place. What was I th your read? I think that's right, Lee. Actually, I thought it would be more emphatic in the room than it turned out to be. Um, I think our total poll of about 500 people roughly said 80% thought the short-termism. And I think that means two things. Three-year election cycles is part of short-termism, but also a short-term approach to getting re-elected, whether it's three or four yes, years. So yes. I don't think it's only the cycle. I think it's the, the mental uh, you know, approach by our leaders to keeping their job. So 80% thought it did and 20% didn't. There, there was one interesting uh, comment in the room, in particular, I thought... Where, I remember this one. Yeah, where, where the person who thought where there'd been a total breakdown of trust in, in government, per se, not any one government, but just in the role of government that four years was too long because you'd be uh, be careful what you wish for. Quite so, because that could feel a very long period of mm, time. That's right. Um, if you're not satisfied with how government is operating. That's right. Um, I'd like to also put in this conversation, I wonder if it's a bit of a furphy even to be debating the cycle of re-elections. So let, hear me out this for yep, just a okay. minute. Is it three, is it four, is it five? And you can find examples, particularly overseas. It strikes me at the heart, it's not necessarily the length of time, but where you and I have already gone in some of this conversation is how do we move some of our energies and focus away from the here and now, the fixing the problems, the short term wins for our political leaders to project a much longer period not necessarily one that they may be in power, but for the advancement of the country and to perhaps to compete more effectively internationally. Mm, it's tough, and I, and I actually think that short-termism is that attitude yeah. type issue. I, I think, and it has been mentioned, so I'm not just dreaming this one up, is that I think the 24-7 the media cycle, so even go back, say, 20 years, right, is that I think we probably had email then, but we didn't have really social media per se. No, no, no Twitter, uh, no Facebook, no LinkedIn. Uh, you know, Gee, no, it must have been a boring time. It must have been. We might have even had to play board games or card <laughs> games. But, but that has been a huge change. And reaction times by politicians who may or may not be well prepared or who are caught, their audience is much greater, yes. faster. Yes. So the risk of them failing is higher. So it creates this short term, I don't want to fail. Understood. Now they're probably going to feel that much stronger, but mm. all of us in business mm. actually do feel that level of exposure as well. So perhaps part of how we need to help our political leaders, if that's the right way to describe it, is also to help how we're managing our businesses and exposures. Everyone now is a commentator, no matter where, where they are, via the social media channels. We need to find somehow to help our politicians, I do feel, in this space, because we could be even worse a place than we are now.
absolutely. And you look, we, as you know, we are trying on this one, right? So on the whole tax reform debate, where we've tried to actively give governments, both sides, yes. both sides of government, yes. uh, permission to carry out an effective dialogue around tax reform. Uh, the Prime Minister tried to start the debate and uh, unfortunately the opposition seemed to not take up that challenge and I just hope, and we've had a couple and, of editorials. And perhaps in a way, if yep. I could jump in, perhaps in yeah. a way how the government operated when it was in opposition. Absolutely. That's, that's a very good point. And again, it's the short term. I think the, the concept of a fair go has probably been one that generation to generation of Australians has always been very proud of and hold closely to how they feel. Mm. And for me, and the paper explores this area of equity, how there can be equity and opportunity for Australians, particularly younger Australians coming into adult life and developing their own careers. So for me, I can sense that Australia, and through our polls, Australians want to hold a real sense that things haven't changed and those dedicated enough, skilled enough, energetic enough and creative enough mm. can actually, irrespective of their backgrounds, grow and be successful. No matter what the political persuasion or differences, race, colour or creed, in an Australian context, if something is unfair, we'll all spot it and agree with it. And if we lose that, we have a different country, not the one we want to create. Except not the one we want to create, nor the one that perhaps we've been able to enjoy mm. um, of the past as well. Um, I do feel also, Rob, that there was elements of the conversation that were drawn to those in our society and our community that perhaps are more vulnerable to change, not only the trends that we've already covered, but just to the general business and community changes that arise. And fair go also means you don't leave anyone behind. And so we need to make sure, and again, this comes back to part of what you spoke about with looking at the tax system, mm -hmm. that there are ways that people don't fall through and, and, and be left behind in our society. The social progress indicator, we've indicated that that is the other side of GDP. Yes. So social progress indicator plus GDP if that progresses up or down, we're either progressing or regressing. It's not all about GDP, but it's about how is our life progressing around water, education, a fair go generally about equity of our people, um, urbanisation, all of the issues that affect the way we live, our own personal safety and security. Yes. The things that we value, that we can walk around the streets and not and, worry and, about that. And perhaps uh, for us in Australia have taken for granted mm -hmm. Absolutely. in the past. I didn't feel that there was a sense it has been lost, but I felt this was the most em emphatic response in terms of where people were landing. Were you because surprised? No. You weren't? No. I, I, I Why? Because I think it's, it's so close to the psyche of where Australians feel they really do wish to be seen and understood understood in a global context right. as well. Mm -hmm. Not only are we a successful nation, we're a nation that actually cares. Mm -hmm.